joining once again. Um, last week, we, we, we looked at the cloud of witnesses and we had some sisters sharing with us how the Lord used their lives to speak to other people through their words and their testimonies and their journeys with the Lord, thereby shining the light of Christ. We also um, had a time where some of our concerns were things bothering us were, were addressed by the power of the Holy Spirit through the word of God. And we were greatly, greatly blessed. Thereafter, during the week also, there were some concerns on our platform and through contributions of sisters, through the Holy Spirit, our Father also ministered to us. Tonight's session is in line with, with that. Father has given us another opportunity to be able to delve more into that area so that those of us carrying some sort of burdens you know, he would, he would free us. And so tonight I encourage all of us to be a part of it. It is not going to be a full teaching service. Let's make it a, a discussion like we did on the page, sharing our thoughts, experiences, what the Spirit of God is teaching us. And so we can all learn together. We can all learn together. And so before we, we, Start the session. I'll call on Sister Linda, Lena, sorry, Sister Lena, to to lead us onto the throne of our Father, so our hearts can be prepared. Sister Lena, kindly take over and lead us. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Father, to God. Thank you. Amen. Lord, we give you all the praise. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come in your presence. Lord, we are in awe of you. Thank you for the opportunity to share and to learn from one another. Great God, please may our songs of worship unto you. May it be sweet, sweet fragrance, Father, in the name of Jesus. As we sing, Father, prepare our hearts and our minds. Hardened hearts, troubled hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. He is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him out his way. Just to rest upon his promise, just to know that such the Lord. I take it again. So it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, who oh, just. To take him I his way, oh, just to rest upon his promise and just to know that said the Lord. So Jesus, she said. How I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Oh, Jesus, she sang. Oh, my precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more and I'm so glad I've learned to trust him precious Jesus savior and friend and I know that he is with me and will be with 
me to be. Father, we thank you that Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him and how I prove him o'er and o'er. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, he's my precious Jesus. Oh, for grace, oh, for grace, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how, how we trust him and how we've proved him all. And oh, oh, Jesus, our Jesus, oh, our precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, Lord, we will trust you and you alone. Because in you, there is peace, there is love, there is joy. In Jesus' name, we worship our God, amen and amen. And over to Sister Pell. God bless you. Thank you very much, Sister Lena. God bless you so much. We thank Father Almighty, oh, for grace to trust in him. Thank you so much. So sisters, tonight we are looking at the topic or Father will be speaking to us through the, the topic, push to the wall dealing with abuse and, and beyond. So we have our own sister, Ify, with us, who will lead us in the discussion. Sister Jemima would share her journey with us, and then Pastor Hardline would wrap it up for, for us. I just want to encourage all of us here. I believe we have gathered um, in the name of our Father, hungry in our hearts to know the truth about everything. Let's rest our shield and open up our hearts to him. He is here to walk us through the word, to teach us concerning anything that may be troubling our mind with regard to the topic. And so without wasting time, let me call Sister Ify. The Lord is going to speak to us through her, for her to walk us through. Sister Ify, you can take over from me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. God bless you and God bless this space, this time, this platform. It's a privilege as always to be together and to walk with the Lord on whatever it is that he wants to talk to us about. Um, by God's grace, as we have gathered here this evening, it is to discuss one key area that um, has been quite polarized, very hotly debated, and so on and so forth in, an, in, in, in societies, but as well, that have had a variety of impacts in homes depending on how it sits. Um, I remember the days when abuse used to be um, relevant only when you were talking about physical abuse, which is to say somebody beats someone, someone slaps someone. Eventually, there came the days when emotional abuse and financial abuse, you know, anything, anything 
could have abuse added to it. Because after all, you can abuse virtually anything, can't you? You know, so then it became a very wide thing. Now, when it became a very wide thing, then even more, the question of perception also came up. I think I'm being abused. You don't think so. Well, if I think I'm being abused, then I am being abused. You see, also came into, so it became a matter of what I feel, what my opinion is, and therefore what I see. Obviously, because trauma, violence, in any form is painful. It is also one of those things that is like, as soon as you hear, the first jump for most parts is, of course, get it stopped. Of course, remove yourself from it. Of course. But I think that there have been many experiences through life that have shown that it's not as straightforward as that at all. The considerations that go into being wherever it is that the person is are many, which is why sometimes you can have a friend or a sister or somebody that you and they agree that, oh, there's abuse, I'm being beaten, I'm beating something, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being deprived of food, I'm being deprived of, you know, shelter, I'm being deprived of sex, I'm being deprived of so and so. And you or some somebody may advise why are you still staying there as for me I, if it was me i will not stay there hey get out hey, hey, hey please i mean you can you, you they'll kill you and you would find that some or many it's not simply a matter of packing back and walking out of a door us <laughs> I've heard said a number of times, and I find it interesting, but it's very true. Do you know that nobody needs your permission to open their door and walk out of, him, of, of any place? Don't they know where their front door key is? They go and they come. If somebody wants to walk out, for any reason whatsoever, whether tangible or intangible. I mean, to be honest, they know where their door is. They can find suitcase or other means of that. In fact, they can decide to walk out without taking anything. All of that is available. It's not necessarily a matter of people telling them don't go or go. It is because the matter is more complicated than merely, hey, you know? And I know, and I see that in, in, a, in appreciation of the nuances, the multiple layers in this thing, The Lord has brought this matter up for us. And I want to encourage you. It is the right approach would not be a one brush, one skirt for everybody, one blouse for everybody, except that which is scriptural. So, for example, if 
We say that no one will come to the Father except by Jesus Christ. As for that one, uh, whether by hook or by crook, it is a one size fits all proposition. There will not be a different arrangement made because I feel black or blue. No. So the instructions of the word of God will be what they will be. The issue is, when I know the truth, and would I be able to hear God's direction to me in my situation? In these setups, in these settings, there are often the person who is inside, if it is a marriage, inside the marriage. Then there are the people who are close to the couple or close to one person in the marriage. And even those who are not so close, various types of stakeholders. And so you will find that in a conversation like this, someone is asking, I think I'm being abused here. How do I know? Am I really being abused or, or this is not what they call abuse? Or is this abuse? You know, someone is saying, I, have, I am confident, I'm sure 100%. This is example one, two, three, five, ten. I am being abused here. Somebody too is saying, I know someone, I suspect she's being abused. I know someone, I know he's being abused. Different categories. My confidence is that as you are listening, the Lord will minister to you in your correct class. The advice that goes for the person inside it's not necessarily the applicable advice for the person outside. So it will be important for us to hear the wisdom of God for our place. My other prayer is that, look, there were things that we walked through. And in fact, the way that I would report it, I would report, you know, what struck me most in the situation. But I am praying that, you see, God will give us insight into other aspects of the situation, which may not be immediately obvious. Do you understand? When a situation happens, let's say I'm involved in something. I remember sometime in this, my murky journey, right? I had an encounter where a boyfriend took his belt and whipped me properly. Now, if I tell you, this is what I will tell you. I will tell you, and yes, I was just there and this and that and that. And he whipped me and he did this, he did that. So me to this and that. But there are other aspects of the story. There is more. There is what led to that. Why that happened. What I did with it. What happened afterwards. There is also angles about that guy, that husband, that young man, that whoever it is, and what's going on with them. Okay. Also, I need us to understand that 
we are not always the victims. Sometimes we ourselves perpetrate what we would have called abuse if, if it were done to us. What some are doing to a husband, if a husband did it to a wife, the wife will shout and say she's being deprived or abused to this, this, this. I pray that may God open our eyes because the conversation must be enlightening. It must, truth must be spoken. It is also such that, listen, sis, ask for this topic, if you like, go to Google, go to YouTube, go to wherever you want. You will find plenty material. You will find a lot. People have said a lot and they will continue to say a lot. So it's not for lack of hearing what has been said on it. That's not why we are here. It's not because this is an area that, oh, nobody has talked about, so we have to say something. No, 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 no. There's over information, if there's a, such a word. There's too much. There's plenty information, plenty opinions, plenty things are out there already on this matter. Okay. So why are you here? Why am I here? If we wanted to hear what the world has to say, if we wanted to hear what our emotions advise us, you don't need this session. You don't need this session for anyone to come and tell you what you are feeling. You are already aware of what you are feeling. You are already aware of what you are afraid of. You are already aware of what you want to do. It's not anybody who is coming to tell you that. If we want to know what the world thinks, you probably know already. If you don't know, it's so available. You have not come here. It's not a news source. It's not a place where we gather, you know, and give you a synthesis of what the global thinking is on a matter. This is not the forum for that. Why then are we here? We are here because we are children of God. And somehow we know that it is wrong. Abuse like lying is wrong. Abuse like your stubbornness is wrong. Abuse like your disrespect is wrong. Abuse like insubordination is wrong. Abuse like like, like pride is wrong, it's evil, it's not from God and he does not support any of them. Yet we walk through them in our lives. So we have gathered here seeking to hear what does God want to tell me? How does God want me to see this? What does God want me to understand? Because of this, I strongly encourage you to look at it from that perspective, not from the perspective of my feelings or your feelings. Oh, it's, it, but it must be painful, but it's, it's unjust, but it's unfair. No, 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 no. That's not the discussion. That one, there are other fora. What does the word of God say? Where is truth? And you and I know that the word of God does not yield, does not change for me or change for another person. He won't change his opinion. My choice is to look at it and say, hmm, I don't like it. Yeah, I hate it. Oh, I'm not, I'm just, this is foolishness, stupidity. I'm not going to go by this. I will go my own way. I have a head on my shoulders. I have brains. I can also think, God, take your opinion. I will carry my own opinion. That is an option that's available to every human being. It's your free choice. So we will not have an argument or discussion. You don't need it. Nobody needs anybody's permission to, 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 to do what they want to do. 
But we do need each other to call upon the name of the Lord and to also seek what, what is the godly thing to do. So tonight, if you are here, you are here seeking to hear the voice of God. I will pray one thing that you will seek to hear it for yourself. If even you are the sister or the brother or something of somebody who is abusing or somebody who is being abused, eh? I pray that you will seek to hear the voice of God in terms of what you should do, not what they should do, you. Each one must hear the word for themselves. Don't be looking, you have your own, you have not mastered, you've not finished covering what God, you know, may want you to do in the situation. Have you heard from God yourself concerning you and what you are to do about it? If you have heard from him, then you are on the good path. Follow what you heard, you see. Huh? But if you have not finished hearing from God on what you are to do, concentrate on that one first. That's the most important thing because you are the person that you control. You are the person you control. You are the person who will make a choice about whether you hear the voice of God or not. This is the gift that everyone has. That your sister too must make the choice as to whether she will hear the voice of God. That brother must make a choice as to whether they will attend to the voice of God. Let there be truth. Let there be light. Okay. Then we will be helped. Then we will be helped. Otherwise, we will struggle. We will not find truth. And you know one interesting thing? That actually, when our spirits, for those of us who are born again, you belong to God. God is your father. Do you realize that because the Holy Spirit lives in you, when you hear the truth of God, many times you recognize it. Even when your flesh is fighting it, there's inside you, your spirit knows that this thing is true. It says that you are struggling with the truth. So you see, I am laying some ground rules to help us because this needs to be productive. This needs to be God talking. This needs to be we hearing God. And I, I am confident that the spirit of God will speak to each one in their particular position and situation, exactly what they need to hear. We will not be given any guidance outside scripture. We will not be given any guidance to you as representing another person. Oh, my sister, what should my sister do? No, it it's won't work well. It will not work well. But what should you do? That is a question you, you can ask God directly. And that's a question I'm trusting him to lead us into. And he will help us. He will definitely help us. You can be the one who is abusing or abusive. You can be the one at the receiving end also. We are all gathered here. The categories vary. May God speak to each one and bring life in each situation. Now, Dear sis, I will touch on another thing. Because of certain well-publicized cases, there has been a, a certain positioning. Number one, there is the positioning that, oh, People of the church, people who call themselves Christians, they will say, when you are in an abusive situation, stay there, stay there, stay there. And that's all they can say, stay there. It's a lie. That's number one. 
Number two, it has also been positioned that if you stay there in that situation, they'll kill you. They'll kill you. For example, this one is dead. That one is dying. That one has died. This one, we did the funeral. This one was there. I saw it. And then this is how, and I heard it. And I heard the video. I saw the video. They'll kill you. So there's a ministration of fear. You, you are not speaking faith. There's no confidence in anything that God has said. That gives anybody... There's no confidence in anything that God has said that gives anybody light for their path. It's fear. Be led by fear. Be led by fear. It's not from God. It's not from God. I repeat, it is not from God. Any counsel, any guidance, any action that is led by fear, orchestrated by fear, managed by fear, directed by fear, which God has clearly said that I have not given you the spirit of fear. He said, fear not. Don't allow fear. Don't work with fear. Don't be led by fear. Anything, if you say something, you are doing something, you choose to stay or you choose to live out of fear, you are doing something wrong. You are being led by the wrong thing. You are a child of God. If you were not a child of God, eh, your case will be different because when you are not a child of God and you are a child of Satan, in Satan's family, fear is one of the leaders. So it is of course correct that you be led by fear. It's not a problem. That's your family situation. But when you are a child of God, he says the righteous live by faith. And faith, eh? Faith, no, that he's talking about is the word of God that you believe. God has said something and you receive it and you believe and you have confidence in him. And based on that, you are led and you are directed by the Holy Spirit. That is how a righteous person, that is a person whose sins have been washed by the blood of Jesus. That's how they live. That's how they do their decisions. Do you see? Hmm. So whatever it is you are thinking and whatever it is you are doing and whatever it is that you are handling, check yourself. What is leading you? Stay, stay, stay. Is it fear? Leave, leave, leave. Is it fear? What is leading you? So that's the other thing to help us. You cannot walk by fear and think you are pleasing God. In these situations as well, if you are a child of God, I think what is the ideal? What is the agenda? Is the agenda to please myself or the agenda is to please God? I will please God in all other areas, but when it comes to this one, no, 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 Jack, I must listen to my flesh, my feelings. No. Sweet. No. Are you a child of God or you are a child of God? You see, it cannot be. Consider something. Eh? You mean to say that your heavenly father, hmm, he can talk to you about the job you are to take. He can talk to you about the food you are to eat. He can talk to you about which school your child should go to. But when it comes to a place where you are being verbally, physically, emotionally, whateverly abused, he turns into a, a, a dumb, mute, and dumb, and deaf, and dumb stone. Is that, is that what happens? Do you mean... Do you mean to say that God will talk about everything else except this matter? Because why? He's embarrassed. He's shy. He's too sensitive. Oh, surely not. 
If God has direction for you, where to live, if God has direction for you, whether to uh, resign from your job or not, surely God has direction for you, how you are to work in your marriage. Direction that he can speak to you directly. I'm not even talking the one that someone will stand on platform. The God that speaks to you and tells you, uh, share the gospel with this one, tells you, give to that one. That God who tells you, do this or do that, does not turn into a deaf and mute when it is critical. No, he doesn't. If it feels like he has, then the challenge is in the communication channel, but not because God has suddenly run away because of what and what. He has a voice. He will talk to you if you want to hear him. Sometimes we can be very loud in ourselves, so loud that it's not because God is not telling me what I need to do or what I need to understand. It's just that I'm so engrossed in me that I, I, I am not hearing him. If I can shift my gaze and say, I want to know what God's will is for me here. I want to honor God in my marriage. I want him to say to me, well done. And do whatever it is God leads you. You will hear his voice. You will hear him just like you hear him give this one to somebody. You will hear him. Then I will also tell you something. If God tells someone to stay in a situation of pressure of any sort, so I'm using a broader term, it can incorporate abuse or what may be termed abuse. The instruction will not be limited only to stay. But the instructions, there will be also guidance on, guidance from him, not guidance from human wisdom, not human so-called logic, demonic earthly wisdom, makes so much sense, but destroys. No, that's not it. But God will also give you guidance on how to conduct yourself in the place where you are in the place of, let's say, captivity. If you are to be in captivity, let's say. Okay, so it's not enough to even say that, oh, I'm not, I'm not saying, I've decided, you know, so I, I have to stay. If that decision is based on what God has said to you, there should be and there will be more guidance in the word of God by the spirit of God that, that conducts your behavior, your thinking, how you are carrying, what, how you should carry yourself in that home that you are in that time of, of, of stress and challenge. It's not a, just a bland go, a bland stay. No. Oh. No, there's more. There is more to it. So, I trust by God's grace that in these few words, you understand why we are here. You understand and you agree that we seek God's opinion God's perspective together. And also that there is usually more than one side to any story. Even when I tell the story myself, I'm not even talking about somebody telling you, after somebody telling you, oh, 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 oh. there's so much you don't know. So much you will not hear, so much. Why? Because the person that is telling you, eh, there is only so much time in which they can tell you what they need to tell you. 
So they will tell you what strikes them the most. That's one. Number two, the person that is telling you, they themselves don't know everything. So even if they wanted to tell you, they cannot tell you what they don't know. You see, so even me, myself, there may be angles to my own story that I don't know. And sisters, I'm sure that you may have encountered this in maybe other areas. You see, the, the situation, you'll be very confident that, oh, this my boss dislikes me, dislikes me, dislikes me, blah, blah, blah. He's the one who caused me to be, uh, they did not promote me. It's because of him, it's because of him. You can carry that. Then one day, a series of events will come to light. You will learn things you did not know, and you realize you were wrong. So, so, so wrong. Irrespective of the fact that you were so confident. You were wrong because there were things in the picture you did not know. You simply did not know. The fact that you are sincere doesn't mean you are right. The fact that you are sincere and so, so loud in your confidence does not mean you know it all. You know all the key things. What more is there to know? I, this, this, this. Oh, let them just show you the right one or two things. You will have to eat humble pie and you will, you will be so embarrassed and humiliated. You cannot, you cannot say anything. So it is very important to lean heavily on the one who knows everything. It is so important. That's why sometimes God will give you guidance in a situation and you think, ah, really? It's because there are elements you don't know. So because of those elements, he will tell you, do this or say this or don't say this. Or don't. You think, ah, but I should, by now I should be doing this. They say, no, 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 no. Don't go there because there are things you don't know in this situation. There are things you don't know. So many have destroyed precious things, precious lives as a result that they have taken decisions on their own. They did not hear the voice of God. He did not give them insight. He did not give them light. Later, 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 sometimes they realize, sometimes they never do. But they eat the bitter fruit because you see, whatever a man sows, shows shall he reap, except for mercy. So this is it, my sisters. There will be more. I needed to set us on the same page together so that as we seek the voice of God on this matter, we can hear it clearly. We needed to remove some of this cobwebs so we can see clearly. Then you can hear. You can be ready. And you'll be aware that, no, all of these elements play in. Don't trust your emotions on any matter. Don't trust your, not on this matter, not on any other matter. They come, they go. Don't trust them. So put those ones aside and let's listen. What is God saying? I pray that irrespective of the situation you are in, whether you are the one that is abusing somebody, abusing your house help, abusing a child, abusing your husband, abusing somebody. Or you are the one that is in a situation of abuse as in you are receiving some form of abuse in one way or the other. Or you are someone, a concerned citizen who is aware of or concerned about such a situation apparently in another person's life. My prayer is that, Father, speak to each one. Let your children hear your voice. May the voice be personal. May they know what is for them. May they understand that you're speaking to each one personally about them, themselves, 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 so that we may be wise with the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of the world. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God richly bless you, Sister Ife. God so bless you. Um, that was very deep, sisters. He has set the pace for us. And Father has spoken deep um, truth to us through, through her sharing. I've taken my portion of it. And I believe you have also heard from Father. 
the bottom line is this, we all need to hear from our father in every situation. Why? The Bible says that he delights in every detail of our lives, every detail of our lives. And if that is the case, I don't see why we should hesitate in going to, to him. Psalm 37, 23 to 24. He says the righteous one shall live by faith. And so that is the mandate he is um, giving to you and I, that going forward, we should not do anything out of fear because we can't walk in fear and think we are pleasing him. We need to walk by faith and we need to know what he's say, saying to us along the journey in every situation we come across. That is why he said we should come boldly before the throne of grace. We will obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Sisters, the invitation is to you and I. It is never too late. And we don't go once, twice. It is a lifetime invitation. As often as we need him, as often as we, we, we want to hear from him, his lines are open and we can reach out to him. God bless you, Sister Ife. Thank you, Jesus. So we have Sister Jemima with us. She would share with us and then we'll call in Pastor Adline. Um, Sister Ife, before Sister Jemima comes, we have lots of questions from our Google form. And so I don't know whether you'd want us to tackle that one before Pastor Adeline comes to um, wrap up for us, or maybe she, I don't know whether she's even available. Um, let's, let's have, uh, let's okay. start Jimmy yes. and then, yes, let's, uh, Pastor Adeline um, will also, I'm sure, speak okay. briefly. And then we will go into we'll go into the, the questions. The questions. Right. Yes, please. Thank you very much for the clarity. Thank so you. Sister Jemima, kindly take over from me and share. Hello, Sister Jemima. Okay, before she comes, sisters, I have posted the link um, to the Google form. It is not too late. If you have concerns, you could go there and type it. We will receive it and we'll read it out. You could also post it to us, either Sister Ife or myself, through the chat window and it will be addressed. Thank you very much. Sister Jemima, if you are ready, kindly go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Pell. Please, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Command my network to be stable in Jesus' name. So good evening, sisters. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, Auntie God bless you. Uh, Pastor Adeline, thank you so much for this opportunity. So hmm, these things are difficult to talk about, but we do need to talk about them. Um, so I would just want to share my journey. It's my personal journey. It might be different from yours. But then this is my journey. I am happily married to, I call him the Pastor Charles. <laughs> well, that's what all the children call him. And both of us have been called into the children and youth ministry. He is the pastor. I'm the support system called by his side. My husband is a patient and kind man. And he's an anointed teacher of God's word. And through him, by the grace of God, many youth have been turned from masturbation and pornography. And Pastor Charles' ministry with the youth is so amazing that parents come over to look for this Pastor Charles. Sometimes they've never seen just to thank him. I remember the retreat that we organized at Mount Provi um, earlier this year in January. We were privileged to to have him preach to us. And the deep teaching on the Holy Spirit, it was just amazing. Not only did this packet design the woman, but it led to a baptism of many in the Holy Spirit. But the most humbling part of all this was when before he left, because he had to leave, and then the ladies, we continued the discussion, the Bible studies left over. But before he left, he made an announcement to this group of women, some who knew me from church, and perhaps we're a bit familiar for some of my staff members. And 
I'll never forget what my husband said. He said, this woman changed me with her prayers. I'm a pastor today because she didn't give up on me to hear her. And I felt <laughs> it was like this anointing fall on me. And it was like an announcement that opened up an anointing to flow from the head. And there were healings and there were deliverances at the meeting. And it was just amazing. I hope I'm not boring you with all these accolades. I'm sorry on my blessed man of God. But I needed to let a sister here know who has been pushed to the wall that God is faithful. His word is true. And my marriage is a testimony to that effect. We're not always like this. We're the best of friends into marriage. In fact, we never really dated. We've shared here before. I think one, one of the how-tos, it was um, uh, a vows day. My husband and I were on it. And I remember Auntie Fuadji came to laugh at me in the back. Hey, you people were chopping love. <laughs> My husband and I never really dated. So I always tell him that he owes me a proper proposal because he didn't do the one knee, that one that Pastor Alain was talking about. So it's a joke between us that he owes me a proper um, proposal. And we never thought during counseling that we would ever go through any conflict at all. I remember when we were even having the counseling and that day we were treating conflict resolution. My husband and I were kicking each other under the table with our feet like, and we're like, ah, that's man, he doesn't know what he's talking about. The way the two of us, we are fine, pan. how on earth can we ever have a conflict? Hmm. We didn't know, so we got married. Our first few years in marriage was a war zone. We weren't kind to each other. And we went through both physical, verbal, emotional abuse, as we would put it. I too, though I never admitted it to myself, but then didn't treat my husband kindly at all. See how the Bible says about the virtuous woman that she would do him good all the days of his life. I was not that woman. I didn't honor him and my heart wasn't right at all. My home was constantly filled with anger and rest, no peace at all. There was also the strain that came from trying to have children, the blame game, the in-laws who were very unkind. Oh, sisters, I was a mess. We we're both Christians, all right. We love the Lord, but we're not rooted and grounded in that love. So you see all the nice things I said and where we are today. This was how many years ago? About six years ago. Or seven, about six, seven years ago. Yeah. So this was way even before closer work wise. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 8, when the people were asking Jesus about divorce, he said to them, Moses, because of hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. From the beginning, it was not so. I don't believe that God created marriage to be a war zone. I remember one day a young man asking in church that why is marriage so difficult and why they hear so many horror stories and bad things about marriage. Sisters, the youth see how we, we operate in our marriages. They are watching us. Marriage in itself, I believe, is a good thing. But it's the people in there giving to their flesh. That's my, the beautiful thing that God has created. So the marriage reunion itself, it's good because when God created everything, he said it is good. But it's the people in there. And that's the focus of what God um, was teaching. Now, God taught me in those years. Because we fall short of God's grace and glory. In John chapter, sorry, James chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, I'd like to read from the Amplified. James chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. And this scripture was so true in my case. It says, what leads to strife, discord and feuds? And how do conflicts, quarrels and fightings originate among you? Do they not arise from your sensual desires that are ever warring in your bodily members? You are jealous and covet what others have and your desires go unfulfilled. So you become murderous 
To hate is to murder as far as your hearts are concerned. You burn with envy and anger and are not able to obtain the gratification, the contentment and the happiness that you seek. So you fight and war. You do not have because you do not ask. Or do ask and yet fail to receive because you ask with wrong purpose and evil selfish motives. Your intention is when you get what you desire to spend it on sensual pleasures. And this scripture went a long way to deliver me from this situation because God pointed out to me that the reason for the fight was not just the physical reasons or you didn't talk to me nicely and all that, but it was that war that was going on within our members. And this scripture just summarizes the cause of our fight. And that was what was happening in my home. Though we both blame each other. My husband was blaming my arrogance and lack of submission for being the reason he gets uncontrollably angry. Because the anger was really serious. I also blamed him that I was the way I was because he offered me no help and I was in love. Note that this is the same man I could swear my life back then that he loved me so much before marriage. Little did I know that <laughs> it is not in man to do good. And this war that was going on in our members, I later found out that his background made it difficult for him to love. He had never received love. He was born into uh, in, in wedlock and mommy never cared for him. He was shipped off to grandma, lived with grandma who was very abusive and he had been oppressed all his life. So he had serious anger issues because he never really was able to express himself. Everything he said led to a beating. Everything he said led to an insult. And so he had grown up in such an environment and he had a lot of things bottled up within him. And he had vowed to himself, unbeknownst to me, that he would not let any other woman do that to him again. And me, on the other hand, hey, I was selfish. I was insolent. I called myself an independent woman. And no man was going to take me for a ride. In fact, before I got married, I told myself, as for me, if you don't know you're my husband, you slap me. Hey, that day. Like, why did I even, <laughs> why, why did I even think that way? Like, why did I even have that as, as a scenario that would happen so that I was planning what I would do should such a thing happen? And I didn't know that independence and marriage do not work, work together. So how was I pushed along? Hmm. I just believe that everybody sometimes needs to get to a place where you can just lift up your hands, surrender to God and say, God, I give up. Sisters, please, can you hear me? Or my line is breaking. Please, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Everybody has to get to that point. I am... What, um, working with a, a dear sister who has gotten to that point, and I see how humbling it is. I also had to get to that point. So I remember, I mean, you know, the funny thing is that all this while, up to today, I don't remember what the exact issues of our conflicts were, honestly. If you ask me today that, why were we always fighting? Why would we go a week without talking to each other? Why was that verbal abuse and even physical abuse. Honestly, I don't even remember. I can't pinpoint and say, oh, it is because of A, B, C, D. But this one, I remember. I remember this because this was my breaking point. This was the point where I was pushed to the wall. So I remember one day, my husband used to work with 10,000 works and photographers. Their studio was at Hachimota. And he would always be like, oh, I'm the man, I'm the man, you know, and me too. <laughs> so while they're here, I just heard him talking to his friend on the phone or one of his colleagues at work that, oh, Jemima will bring it. So he was done with the call and I was like, ah, I'll bring what, something. Then he said, hey, you are taking this to the studio and you have to take it before you go to work. I was like, you know, sometimes I go through sites before I go to work. So if you need me to do something, you see, I'll 
to show me some respect. Me, 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 me. And you have to inform me ahead of time. Eh, you're always saying that I don't. <laughs> so eventually he said, okay, go. Don't take it. I'll take it myself. I said, fine. He said, fine. Then I'm going out of the gate. And then this man comes to stand in front of the car that you are not leaving this house. And you must take this thing. Sisters, you see the way I'm narrating this thing here, it's very trivial and very, it sounds really silly, right? But hmm, at that time, it was not funny. I was angry. I was so angry. I was so mad. And I told him that young man, if you do not clear from my phones, I'm going to knock you down with this car. Because I have had you, I've had it up to here. I'm not taking this anymore. By this time, I had all. I had my bags packed in my boot and I'd made up my mind I'm going to find a place to go and hide, you know, because I just didn't know how I was even going to tell my parents just what's happening in my home. I mean, we just married this like in the second year and they're already killing each other. I didn't know who to talk to. I couldn't talk to my pastor because I didn't know how he would handle it. I feel like I didn't have this kind of group. So I felt like, hey, if I go and tell my pastor, what if he preaches with it, you know? There was that fear that was um, driving me. So I told him that, look, if you don't get out from the front of this car, I am going to knock you with this guy and kill you. He said he dared me. And sometimes I find that we do that, or sometimes people do that, or maybe I did that. Let me just speak for myself, you know, that if you are a man beat me, hey, sister, don't, don't do that. And if you're really a man, touch me and see. If you're really a man, slap me. Why, why are you doing that? Why are you daring the man? Men don't like to be dared. You know? And in this case, I, who was very choleric, didn't like to be dared. So this man says that he's not going to move from the car. I had to take this thing. And I said, I'm not going to take it. And then sisters, I don't know. <laughs> it was... <laughs> It was as if I was possessed. Can you believe I moved this car? I went to bang through the gate with the guy. And I, that he was just hanging on the car, bang through the gate, running to the street with the man on the car. Oh, it was really, really terrible. So after this incident, honestly, it was, it was really bad. It was really messy. Like I almost killed the guy. <laughs> if he had not jumped on the guy, banging on it, Jemima put me down, put me down. <laughs> hey, hey, I seriously, this devil, eh, he didn't come to play. I almost killed him. And I'm grateful that my husband never mentioned it to anyone, but he showed me grace. I don't think I would have stayed if he had done that to me. But that day I cried out to God. I had become a caricature. I mean, when I moved out, I went forward far away. I just went to park and I just went. Because when I parked, I still had the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, why are you? And I even remember that I have the contract of the guy. I called the guy, in fact, the wife. So I called the wife. The wife gave me the guy's number. And then when I called the guy, he said that, oh, he cry. he's not in the studio or something like that. And that he will come, he will pass through my office and take the items. And just look at this silly, trivial. I was going to kill my husband for nothing. By now, I would have been at Insawu. Would have just killed him for nothing, you see. And by this time, he too was seeking solace by chatting with others. Me too, I was having my own emotional affair. I didn't admit it at that time that I had a problem. I just justified what I was doing by, because of what he was doing. But sisters, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. So at that point, I just broke down and I wept. And I said, God, show me mercy. I just said, God, show me mercy. Because this is not the woman that he married. This was not the woman that he married, honestly. Because he always used to tell me that, oh, he likes the way I am so sweet, I'm so motherly, you know. 
it was definitely not the woman he married. I'd become a monster. I'd become a caricature. I don't know what. So it was at that moment when I cried out to the Holy Spirit that he should help me. And sisters, God is faithful. Because sometimes I find that when we are having issues, we cry to every other person, go and tell our parents, the pastor, the, 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 the. but then we don't go to God genuinely and say, God, help me. When I went to tell God, help me, then I remember that a dear sister back in school had given me sermons by Lady Reverend Lady Ward Mills, about 10 gig of wisdom. Hmm. And I started praying and just listening to that word. I mean, when I go to work, I would just eat it because when I go to work, I don't even want to come back home. I would just eat it. I'll just chew on the word. And as I was hearing the teachings, the teachings are very similar to what we are, we are listening to in Closer Work Wives. I started changing. I stopped being petty. I became easily forgiven. And I honestly shocked my husband in how I would say it's okay and pass things over which formerly would have caused a whole like tantrum, I would throw a tantrum. And God taught me how to honor him, how to speak gently, how to see the anger triggers when they are coming up. And just like the scriptures say in Proverbs, like breaching a dam, it says I stop the argument before it's too late. And the Holy Spirit will tell me when to talk. The Holy Spirit will tell me when not to. He will tell me when to apologize. He will tell me when... Even when sometimes he is wrong, he will still tell me to apologize. And honestly, sisters, I said to the glory of God, I don't know when my husband changed. I just remember that I would pray over his clothes, I'll pray over his shoes, and I'll pray God's will and God's purpose over his life. Every midnight, I was up praying. And to the glory of God, God delivered my husband from masturbation. He delivered him from pornography. He delivered him from all forms of addictions. And one day he told me that he hears it audibly that God is calling him. He can hear that God is calling him. We are still growing in our work, um, our love work. Yeah, but oh, sisters, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. I would have been an inmate at in Saum for murder. My husband would have been lost or dead or whatever. He will not be here serving this kingdom. Look at the man I described at the beginning. It's obviously not the same person that we are talking about here. So God is able to turn things around. God is able to make things beautiful. God is able to arrange things when we are able to, when we are able to just trust him. So because we have questions, I think I would pause here. And then when the questions come and there are any other, um, have any further comments from my experience, I'll be able to share. God bless you, sisters. Oh, sorry, sisters. Sorry, our lights just went off, so I have to reorganize myself. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, sister Jemima. And what a story, sisters, I am so dumbfolded, you know, at the power of God, at the power of God. And I, I thank the Holy Spirit and his work in all of us. In our sister's story, we, we saw the love of Christ, the love of God. You know, he finds us in our mess and he cleans us up and he doesn't throw us away. You know, he doesn't. And I thank God that she, she, she sought help from the right source, the Spirit of God started teaching her. You have heard her testimony. The same Holy Spirit who worked in her to change her and bring her this far is with you and I. And if we allow him, the condition is, if only we will allow him and let him take over and align with his word, our lives will never be the same again. Our stories can change. There is nothing, sisters, there's nothing that is too hard for our father. There is nothing that is too hard for him. He is able to do all things. We thank him and we give him all the glory. By this testimony and by all that we are sharing, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is being exalted. Let us not leave this platform double-minded. 
let's allow the spirit of God within us, like Sister Ife directed and prayed with us, that he will speak to us. Let's welcome his counsel. His way is the way of life. Remember the scripture says that if we walk in the flesh, we will die. But if by the power of the spirit we live, we, we walk in the spirit through the power of the Holy Ghost, we will live. Let's choose life and live. God bless you so much. We have so many questions for our sisters, Sister Ife and Pastor Aline to address for us. But before then, let me find out whether Pastor Adline is ready to top up for us. Hello, Pastor Adline, please, are you with us? Let me check. Yes, please. Yes, I am with us. Please, please, you can take over. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And I was actually hoping that I would join in the the questions are many because I do have a lot to say as well. I, I want to just thank God for the testimony we've heard today. Because you see, when it comes to this particular type of topic and any topic that has, you know, kind of affected you in one way or the other, it really, it really has different ways by which it wraps off people. For some, it can really get you angry you can quit on a ministry, leave a page, say, what are these people talking about? I'm done, they don't know what I went through, who do they think they are, blah, 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 and then that's it. For another, you may be in that situation, you may be suffering, struggling, you know, and you, you know, it, it all feels some way. Different kinds of scenarios. But tonight, what has happened here has filled my heart with great joy because I can see that the Holy Spirit himself is speaking. The Holy Spirit is ministering. He ministers truth and he liberates. When he speaks, he liberates. When he speaks, you realize that your response is, you, you have a certain kind of response different from if we were operating in the flesh. I thank God so much for the sharing. You know, when I loved this sister, if it was sharing and the truth that was pouring out was just amazing. I thank God so much for sister, Jimmy, that what you have shared tonight is just been a blessing. You have really confirmed what the word of God has been, you know, has been laying, the Lord has been laying on my heart the whole time. He says, Adeline, we are one body. It's just one body of Christ, one head, Jesus Christ, one faith, one God, one Lord, one baptism. He says, we are one. We cannot afford to be scattering that which God is building. I will build my church. He didn't say I'm building my church. It's we cannot afford to be scattering what God is building based on what we are feeling or what we experience and what we saw growing up, etc. Let's stay with the word. Now, as our sister has shared, all of us, you know, our hearts have been stirred. I can see sisters responding so beautifully. You know, sisters are saying, God bless you, Sister Jemima, for sharing. Thank God for the power of his word. God bless you. Glory to God. Now, let me just say, let me just say, you know, th this had happened in a flip case. You know, the man had done this thing. He said, hey, you can't stay with this person, he'll kill you. Hey. And even, even, even also on the side of the woman, sometimes they'll say, hey, you can't marry that woman. Oh, are you sure hey, one day she will do this? It's not about one day she will do what? No, it's about what the Lord is doing in each. The work of transformation is so glorious. The work of transformation is so amazing. And we thank God for what we have witnessed here today through the testimony. And I know that many are being liberated right now. We give God the praise and glory. I thank God for what Sister A said. Depending on what we are looking for, this may or may not be the forum because there are a lot of teachings. There's a lot of stuff on the internet. If you want to come into the Testament there, it's okay. We are here. There's a lot of stuff on Google, but if you want the Bible, we are here. There's a lot of stuff out there, but if you want the word of God that liberates, then here we are. That's what we are doing. That's what we are discussing. Nobody is useless. We will not give up on any soul, any soul, whether that person is your son, your daughter, your husband, your friend, your neighbor, your father, your mother. We will not give up on any soul, no matter how bizarre the story. But we pray in the name of Jesus that all may be transformed, that increasingly we will all come to the place where we look more and more like Jesus, irrespective of how bad we once behaved. So we thank God. I give God praise. So Sister Pearl, 
please, you can go ahead with the question so that we can, you know, dive into it right away. But for me this evening, I'm just so blessed at what the Lord is doing in this place. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, Sister Pearl, you are muted. I suspect, you know, she was saying her lights. The light, yes. Yeah, I think so. I won't be surprised if. Uh, yes, she fell off. Okay. <laughs> she's had a bit of a trip. So, yes. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Maybe we, at least the ones that we have seen, we can start yeah, talking can about. Hello. Yes, hello, hello. Sister Pearl. Pastor please, are you done? Yes, yeah, so I'm done. We are waiting for Thank our questions. <laughs> Welcome back. Sorry, it's my internet. Yes. As well, the devil is a liar. He is a damn liar, sis. So we have lots of questions. I don't even know whether we'll be able to tackle them, but I know the Lord will help us. The first one says, um, a friend's husband does not want to work. Every job he does, he stops with an issue. This person is doing this or that and resigns by himself. He sits at home and she does all the running around. Okay. His current job is, his current excuse is he is looking for a job but has not gotten one. But it's obvious he's not trying hard enough. Hmm. I don't know. So that's the question. I'm trying to just go straight to the question. It's long. Mm. Okay, let's skip that one. I'll sort it out later. I can't find the question. It's like a comment. But but, okay. but just, just before you skip it, just before you skip it, just before you skip it. I remember Sister Efe said something that today, let's see what the Lord, we are each seeking the Lord for that change. You know that yeah. whole a uh, friend's husband, uh, somebody something, then we go and put our mouth in some faraway area <laughs> where we don't even know the details of what is happening. Because this mm. type of situation, some of us have some of us have people that are close to us. This is not a friend, somebody, somebody close to us mm. going through situations like that, where for some it's an attack. For some, it's like it's manifesting itself like a medical challenge, but it's an attack of the enemy to just kind of cripple this person. So if you don't recognize this thing and you start going the direction of he's not trying, he's not, it's not, it's not about trial, it's not about try. It's, it's not the word try. We are talking an attack of the enemy. We are talking, it's like somebody has been put in handcuffs. Handcuffs, do you see it? So when you begin to understand what is happening behind the scenes, then you can rise in the method that works. But right now, you see, we are going in the other way. Sorry, go and work. Oh, to me, do you see? So that's the thing that you have to see what is happening and have a, uh, an attitude of compassion. Mm? compassion i know for some people it's their child that is doing that it's their child that is sitting in the armchair and every day it's like mommy give me mommy give me but they are well in age you know and it's not easy for anybody but there is a method an ancient path that works but it comes with understanding because for lack of knowledge all of us perish you see so i just want us to cut it because you may sit there and be looking at your friend like what's wrong there and then maybe when you meet with your friend the discussion is like oh open into a lazy what's what's up with this man da, 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 da. no please no please everybody look inside what god is calling you to do in your eden you we all have instructions for our eden and then let's pray for and love one another you just don't know the details of what is happening on the other side and sometimes when it's opened up to you fully you just might say oh I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, I never knew. Yes, it's because you didn't know. Do you see? Oh, I didn't know. So I came to a place where I decided that I won't wait to know a matter before I'm compassionate. Sometimes you have to wait until, you, oh, how did you know he had a problem? I didn't know this. I didn't. You don't have to always wait to know before. You just have to have that God awareness on the inside of you of what is happening behind the scenes. So you can properly care properly encouraged you know that when somebody's going through some of these things and you rather treat him from that perspective of oh get up and go and do oh lazy oh this it's unlikely you will get <laughs> the results you get you'll be surprised but do you know what encouragements can do huh? do you know what love can do do you know what trusting in god can do 
Do you know what God is able to do? The God you serve, is he somebody that can solve problems? Which God, which of the gods are you serving? Is it the one that is the creator of the entire universe? Is he the one? Because if he's the one, then we are standing on safe ground and there is no shaking and there is no fear. So that's the angle I want us to look at because the question is coming concerning a friend's husband and it's sounding even like there's a little bit of irritation in the sounding, you know, how it's being presented. It's not the, it's somebody's husband. Let's have compassion enough and care enough to pray for them and to help them. And whenever your friend speaks to you, please encourage her for she's a good woman and the Lord has created her perfectly fit for this assignment. Amen. Amen. Okay, so thank you, Pastor Adeline. So I would like you to take the questions, maybe three or four at a go, so we could yes, tackle a um, lot of them. So the next one says, when you have tried everything possible to save your marriage, but your spouse, who is the abuser, is unwilling to pursue help, should you still stay and lose your life? Because he is unwilling to change and doesn't see anything wrong with his actions. Another one says, how do you get over trauma bond? And then another one is asking, how do you handle a spouse who has left home, left you with three kids for over a year and a half and refused to make any effort in child's growth and, man and maintenance? So you are burdened with financial, spiritual, emotional burdens of the house. Three of them. Sister, if it, is it okay? In, in yes, your I think we'll take it. Sister, if will take it. Okay, yes, please. Sister, if <laughs> Thank you, sis. Uh, God is good. So, oh, uh, yes. Uh, I will start uh, because it's three questions and there are a variety of nuances. So, I doubt I would be able to, I would speak to all the nuances, but my confidence is that the Lord will enable, will speak, that's it. And he knows what is important to highlight and what is important to bring up. Um, one of the things that I, I would observe and perhaps help, let us consider, um, when, when you are in a situation like the first question that, I have tried everything possible to save my marriage. You see, I have made a lot of effort. I have prayed maybe, I have been there. I have advised you. I've spoken to your mother to advise you. I've spoken to the pastors to advise you. I have also even gone to everywhere I think I can go to. You know, I have done this and that and that and that. As if by my power, I could arrange to save my marriage. And the challenge is that, unfortunately, it does not lie in the power of a human being and human efforts to save anything. For that reason, it is a path of frustration. Anytime that you are doing something and you are, it is out of the, the desperation because you, you are pressed, I'm stressed, I'm strained, pressed to the wall. So, hey, let me do this. Hey, let me, let me pass here, let me pass here. Let me do this, let me say this. And I woke you up at dawn so that I can talk to you. And uh, I called pastor, let them come and talk to you. If you walk those walks, it's a very painful path. It's a very, very painful path. So I, I, can, I can relate. I can relate to our sister. The healing will start from the one who raises the question, the one who comes to God. In this case, let's say our sister. In the first place, the arm of flesh has already been predicted to fail miserably. It is no surprise that your efforts have not worked. They were never meant to work. They can never work. 
the arm of flesh has already been declared that it will fail you. It's already clear. Of, of course, you can try it, you see. Huh. It's not for lack of trying. You can try. But after you test the scripture and find it to be true, sometimes you just sit down and say, God, I may have missed a turn somewhere. What, what did you say again? He's saying the arm of flesh will fail you, even if that arm of flesh is your own wisdom. Even if that arm of flesh is your own effort, it will fail you. So that is one key thing. You were never called to run a strategic initiative to save your marriage by whatever approaches. And it's interesting that we already have a spouse who is called or labeled here as the abuser. Is that why you call him your heart? Is that what he is to you? Your husband, the abuser? Okay, okay. Now, if, if, if you are a child of God with the power of God in your mouth, what does that mean? Would, would I say that I describe what I see or I speak what I should see? Now, it's not only a matter of what comes out of my mouth, but he's saying out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it first begins in the heart. I think many things have happened which lead me to use a certain word that I never thought I would use for this man. But I am just encouraging my sister, go back to your father, go back to the word of God and see what your father calls him. See what your father calls him calls even the one who who does not believe let's say he's an unbelieving spouse an unbelieving spouse is a spouse who is disobedient to the word of god they don't believe god so you see and of course if they don't believe god of course abuse there is one of them lies abuse pride you know arrogance insolence everything all the sin all sin is sin all of them any of them freely can be chosen to feature any combination to work do you see but what does God call such a person because of you. Check First Corinthians 7. He says he's holy. What? Uh -huh. Holy. How can, what, what is holy about this one? It's not because he's acting as a holy man. Just like it's not because you always act as a righteous woman. You see, uh -huh. there's holiness given, there's righteousness given based on something. And these are laws that are true. So as you cry out, you are seeking understanding. I pray that these things that I'm sharing, you'll be hearing them. You'll be hearing them. Okay. You cannot fix this. Neither can you force your husband to seek whatever you may call help. You think it is help. If it will not help him, it's not help. Sometimes we think that, oh, if he speaks to this person, if he goes to a clinic, if, oh, please, no, 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 no. You have not tried it before. That's why. If you met those who have run through cycles of so-called help and are struggling to stay alive, you understand that it doesn't work for everybody necessarily, you see. The arm of flesh will by all means fail. Sis, please. If he doesn't yes, see anything you. wrong, if he doesn't see anything wrong with his actions, what does that tell you? If that you if you've discerned that, what does that tell you? If you have discerned that there is, this person does not see anything wrong with his actions, what does that tell you? Because you are a woman of God, you are a woman of God, you are a spiritual woman, you should see a lot of things in this structure. But perhaps sometimes because it's so close, you are very close to the action. So you see in parts and then, you know, it becomes complicated. Please, if you would, Resign from your fixing 
contract. And find out what God wants you in particular to do, why you are the suitable helper for this man. He will show you things you did not know. Did he not say, call upon me and I will, I will answer you. I will show you great and hidden things you did not know. Clearly, there are things to be known about this situation. What do you do when you have tried everything possible and they have all failed? God has failed, hasn't he? No. Sit with God then. At least you have tried enough to know that it doesn't work. Thank God. It's a good thing. Now sit with God. God, nothing else will work but you. What do you want me to do? And if you are willing, you will hear. And what you hear, do it. He will not tell you the whole story. He will not tell you what A, a will do, you know, will result in necessarily. He often does not tell you, but he will just tell you, do this. Or look at that. Just follow him you will be helped. Now, um, if you call something a trauma bond, eh? trauma bond is where, from my understanding of it, is where that situation, let's say that situation of abuse, it's like the psychologists talk about a certain link bond between the perpetrator and the victim as if a certain connection is created, a certain, um, a certain ritual, certain ritual, certain dependencies, something is created by that abuse that is done. Don't forget though, in a marriage relationship, you are already one. In a marriage relationship, you already are bonded together. So if this is your husband you are talking about, it's not a trauma bond issue. You have a God bond issue. God made the two of you one. That's the one you should be dealing with. It's not because you, you have a trauma so you can't distance yourself you can't disconnect yourself no 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 unless you want to ignore the strength of the bond god creates between a husband and a wife it's not a small bond it's not a joke that bond is not it's stronger than anything man could think about so look at it again and look at it well and really what is it that you seek to do is it is 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 it that you seek to have your peace of mind you seek not to go through whatever situation that is you are struggling it's painful and it hurts so you don't want it that's all this is about or do you see that the one that you are one with has a serious problem and a place, a part of them that is working not according to the spirit of God, but according to the flesh and according to what the enemy would like. Would you see that? Does that relate to you in any way? Does that bother you in any way? Does his accountability to God bother you? Are you concerned in any way about it? Or is it all about run from the sinking ship? The two of us will not go down together. Like the high priest said, it is better that one man die than the whole nation dies. So you have said, it is better. Let him be destroyed. Get rid of him. I don't want him anywhere near me. Whatever happens, you should carry his monsieur. He should carry his trouble. Go far away. I will want to have my peace of mind. I don't care whether he falls into a pit and whatever. It's okay. Just get rid of him from here. I want a disconnection. But for this reason, the son of God was revealed to destroy the works of Satan. If what you are seeing in your husband 
It's not the work of God, but it's the work of Satan. You know there's a godly and a heavenly agenda to destroy it, to destroy that work of Satan. Would you want to partner with God in it? You have that invitation. Remember that you are already one. You are already one. So the bond matter, especially in a marriage situation, obviously there might be other scenarios where it's not a marriage. So it's a different relationship. But anything that is a bondage is broken by the power of the, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything that is bondage. So that is something that you work with. Okay. Now, if, in fact, this, the, 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 the question is very real. The painful situation of abandonment. And you know, the Bible talks about um, like a wife scorned, deserted in her youth. You see, in scripture, he, he talks about the pain of such a situation. There is a reality in it. There's a toughness in this situation. It's a difficult situation. Now, what does one do? But you, you see something, sweet sis. Whether there is the man in the picture or not, your source has never been human. Whether your husband is with you in a sweet lovey-dovey marriage, taking care of everything or not, eh? your source and my source for our needs has never been human. If it has never been human, then I, uh, the dependency and saying that if my, if for example, if I lose my job, then I'm, 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 I'm messed up because that's my source. If my husband dies, what do you do? Where's your source? And you know, there are people who have seen that situation too. Tough one. What do you do? How about those who have not died? They are there with you, but the situation is such that there's nothing. And there's stress and there's, uh, there's conflict. That one to what? You see, so it means that our source has not shifted to God only because husband is gone. No, that's not what makes you need another source. Actually, you have always needed to rely on God for, for your needs. And my needs, you have always had to rely on God for everything. He has used human beings in many ways to provide it, but the source is God. I pray that you, in your heart, you are completely free of the, of the offense and the pain that this can be used to cause. And the bitterness that is fueled day by day by whispers, comments that you get in your spirit about, eh, you've left me alone to carry the load and eh, he's enjoying himself somewhere and all of those things which sometimes are said. I pray that you are not carrying offense, that you are not carrying on forgiveness and bitterness. It will cloud you from seeing some things, number one. Number two, it will also block your prayers successfully. So the things you ask for too, you will not receive them. That's what God said. That's, you know it. You've seen it. He said it. It's Mark eleven twenty five, 25. Very clear. So that's why I'm praying that you and I are not holding unforgiveness because the situation of being deserted hurts. It hurts. That's why it's important to check on that. But if you are to walk with the Lord in the forgiveness that he calls us to, with his help, how many times have we not had to just fall on God and say, help me? I'm, I just say, help me. 
then the other lever is to know who your true source is. Please. Okay. God says he's your husband. He said that before you were married. He said that when you were married. He said that when you were together with your fiscal husband. He hasn't changed his mind. God is your husband. Will you find him an irresponsible husband, an irresponsible father, on, on caring? Or will you find him incapable? God loves, but it's not. his heart is good, but he just doesn't have to give. He just doesn't have what it takes, the means to provide the needs. Is that the God? Is that your God? But if your eyes look to him, whether, sisters, because all of us are in different scenarios, so please, whether your husband is with you or he's not with you, whether money is passing through his salary to come or is passing through your salary to come, wherever it passes through, however it is, please let us all eh, keep God as our source. Like physically know that it is God who is my source, not some theoretical, like church sounding, yeah, I know God is my source. You say, okay, it's like all protocols observed. Now let's talk about the reality. No, no. Let's know God as our source. Then that one is not my husband that I see. If my husband is removed, my God will not be removed. You see, then I am having to go to my God and say, God, please, school fees. Father, please, emotional needs. I need uh, encouragement. Lord, please, the children, I don't know. We need somebody to advise them, to help me to whatever it is. God must work with us as our husband indeed. Let me lay it there. I'm sure that the Lord will add to us whatever he sees fit from Pastor Adline or from any other source. God bless you. Thank you very much, Sister Ifi. God bless you for the wisdom. So um, Pastor Adline has a testimony to read for us. David, the questions are many. We will not be able to tackle them. So we'll just yeah, do let's it. what we can. And we'll yes. continue. Maybe, we'll continue. Yes. Yes, so that we please. can do justice yes. to them. Otherwise, to them. it will be. Yes, please. Yes, yes please. please. So, Pastor, I kindly take over. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, I just received a testimony and I want to read it. I want to share it. It, it is with permission from our sister. Okay. So, so I read. Pastor Adline, I'm so ashamed. I did worse than Jemima did. I am ashamed. I, one day, I broke glasses all over so he couldn't go out. So he had to walk, walk on the glasses. He was bleeding. He was bleeding and I was not merciful. He had to call our pastor. But I only remembered this as Sister Jemima was sharing. But that very, he says, but that. But that every time I recount the event of that day, I remember only the negative words he used on me after he bled. And I was not merciful. I then kept on saying he abuses me verbally until God saved me. My, says, he says, Lord, I'm so ashamed of all I have done. I always thought I was good. I allowed pain to control me, jealousy and insecurity. I thank God that grace has found me. Sometimes I did it in front of my children. Mercy has found me. I've actually allowed pain to control me. I've been teaching and preaching, but please, this needs to be heard. Please share it. I honestly blocked my mistakes and even justified my behavior. My biological mom never believed I was capable of doing this. I really thank God for saving me. Please share, for grace has found me. Hallelujah. Sisters, this testimony has gladdened my heart immensely, just as Sister Jemima's own. Because with Sister Jemima's own, I know her. I love her so much. She's so sweet and, you know, so filled with the Holy Spirit and such a blessing, so gentle. With our sister who has just shared this too. She is also so sweet, so, so sweet. I love her so much. So in all of this, I don't know them the way they used to be yesterday, but I testify of who they are today. And I give God glory for these powerful testimonies because for me, I can see the mighty hand of God. 
in their lives. And I thank God. I am so grateful that our sisters have given us permission to share you know, the venerable moments of their life and to expose it to us. I believe that what, we, what is happening here tonight is liberating us. God bless you, sisters. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pastor Adeline. And thank you very much, sisters, for, for sharing. God bless you too. So we'll continue to take our questions. Um, I have here, it says that, when can a person report an abuse to a third party for help? Then there's another sister wants to know, the issue about not uncovering one's husband still beats my mind, maybe just guessing that Safira did not want to uncover her husband in the Ananias and Safira story. Maybe she wanted to get home and ask him why he lied, but unfortunately, it, not, it did not end well. Not everyone who will die out of abuse may go to heaven because they were trying to cover up things. I believe that the extreme of either options is not good. At what point is a person allowed to speak up? The third one, how do I live with a narcissist husband who won't change and it ends and it doesn't end? It's draining. Fourth one, please, is it fair for a husband who takes more salary than you do 50-50 with you? I mean, he will take either school, school fees and you will take house expenses. Sister Ife or Pastor Adeline, please, in your few could address those questions for us. Thank you. If it's not clear, I could repeat them. It's plenty. <laughs> yes. Okay. So maybe you, <laughs> you could take two, sister, if it, or maybe I should go over it and maybe read two at a time so you, you could share and address it's okay. them. It's okay. We are right. trying. But then one of it was that the person said, you know, why, you know, talking about not uncovering nakedness. The person is yeah. saying she thinks that Ananias yeah. and Safira, she thinks that yeah. Safira did not want to uncover nakedness, etc. You see, the point is this. We, we are not teaching anybody external behavior. We are teaching everybody how to relate with the Lord from that place. It's, it's a heart matter. Okay, it's a heart matter. So if you read the story of Ananias and Safira, what, what we were told was that you have not lied to human beings, but to God. God has seen your heart. There's no maybe, maybe I'll get home and do whatever. Right from the beginning, we've always made it very clear that when we teach on unity, on oneness, we are talking about oneness in Christ Jesus because the Bible says it is in him that all things hold together. It doesn't hold together in our whatever, whatever we are doing. You know, some people are like, oh, okay, you know, let, let's cheat together. Let's fornicate together. Let's do this, let's do this. That's not a deal. It is oneness in Christ Jesus. That's it. So with the Tower of Babel, they were speaking the same language. They had the same mind. They were doing the same thing. And they were actually getting it done. But God, there is a but God everywhere. God came and destroyed it. So we are always teaching you that critically, we are talking about a posture of the heart and an alignment to the word of God and the truth. What God is saying is what we want to follow, okay? So please don't do anything based on, oh, Pastor, this said this. Oh, so, so, and so said it. There are a lot of people, I've had people tell me that, oh, I left my marriage because pastor, and they'll mention the pastor's name. Sometimes they'll even tell me where the pastor is and everything and say, pastor, so, and so said I should leave the marriage. I'm thinking, what is this? Why are you putting that, you know, that whole thing on pastor so-and-so? There is a choice. You have to make a choice who you marry. You have to make a choice what, what you want to do, how you do it. There's always a choice, but let's not do this. This person said this or this person said that. Everybody should be able to make a choice. Safira made a choice to lie to the Holy Spirit. And it didn't end well because it will never end well when we walk that way. That's it. So she was told point blank. Why did you decide to lie to the Holy Spirit? You see, so now there are a lot of people who prioritize each other. We handled it under idolatry. There are some people who elevate husband or wife above God's word or truth or anything. You know, that's not what we have ever taught. We have never taught that right from Genesis 3. 
Adam should have stuck with God's word, not listen to the woman's word and eat the forbidden fruit and cause all of them to fall down, right? So that's what we are teaching. So when it comes to uncovering nakedness and then God says love covers a multitude of sins, you should ask yourself, what is the why in what you are saying? Sometimes you will tell somebody something not even for the purpose of maybe seeking help or sometimes just to embarrass or to seek pity for yourself or to move in the direction of fear sometimes. So what is the motive behind what you are doing? The uncovering or whatever you think you are doing. What is the motive? Is it in alignment with God's word or is it self flesh? Is it God or is it your personal fear? Is it God or is it something you believe that, oh, this is the only way I can get free. Let me ask you, just sit down right now and ponder. Who is it who can save you? Let me ask you. Who? Is it your pastor? Huh? Your bishop? Who? Who? 911. Is it 911 or in Ghana 191? Is it the police force? Security? Huh? Security. A friend of mine, she told me how they have CCTV, they have top level security. They are really well sorted in, in security. They don't know how the thieves came into their room, walked through all the room. They, they just don't know how. Who is it who can save you? Think about it. Because sometimes there's this whole, at which point should I go and tell somebody? Nobody is saying don't tell or, or tell or whatever. Be led by the Holy Spirit. But what I want you to answer is that the person you are going to tell, can they save you? Can they save you? Do you know that I know certain situations where they went to tell the police, oh, give us a restraining order, da, 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 da. They said, is, you know, has the person um, exhibited any threats to life, some, some, some. They said, oh, no, if, if not, we, we can't help you unless there is, there is proof of threat to life, something like that. The person was killed before they showed up. Why are we putting our hope somewhere and removing it from the one who can help us? Do you see it? So I need us to have that shift of mindset so that in all that you are doing, have that mindset that you are under God's covering. He will take care of you for he's faithful. He is faithful. Please keep that in your mind, okay? Because apart from that, I don't know, who, who do you want to go and talk to? Who? Who? Think about it right now. Who? Is it the head of state? Is it the head of state? Can you even get access there? Hmm? And would the head of state cut off his sleep to spend time with you watching over you 24 seven? Who are you going to talk to? Think about it. So as the Lord leads you, then you go. The Lord said to Ananias, go to Judas's house on the street called Street. There's a man called Saul over there. Go. He said, what? Huh? That guy, that abusive guy, go. God knew what he was doing and changes was coming. I don't know who God will send to your house. I don't know who God will send to your situation. I don't know who he'll send into your heart, but God will do it. Hallelujah. Sister Pell. Yes, please. God bless you. And uh, okay, so okay, there was one I read about the um, salary issue um, and yes. making equal contributions. She wants to know whether yes. it's fair it's or not. Fair. Yes, yes. We, we, we just we just want to say this. It's not about fairness, whether something is fair or not. The key thing is what is your reaction in the situation? Make sure that no matter what your reaction is, we have to look like Jesus. That's the critical thing. We react according to our flesh, our feeling, our this, our this, and that. It won't help anybody. So it's not about fairness, really. It wasn't fair for Jesus to die on the cross. It's not about fairness. What's your response? What's your reaction? How are you handling it? That is what, at the end of the day, will bring us to that place where it's like, wow, hey, this woman is really a good woman. Wow. Even though I was earning much more than her and we were sharing the responsibilities, she was still able to support at that time, blah, blah, blah. There are different scenarios in everybody's home and you don't know what is going on in your husband's heart. You may think he's earning more than you, but you don't even know what is happening financially. You don't know. You have assumed based on numbers, but you don't know facts on the ground. If you have the ability to help, help, because God has created you to help. A time will come when he'll tell you, hey, did you know that those times when you're helping me, is, I was doing this, I was doing that, I had some loans to service, da, 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 da. I remember in my own personal case, there was a, there was a time when, you know, fast forward, okay, fast forward from that period. I found out that we had lost a lot of investments and, you know, we are just falling down seriously, you know. And I was shocked. I was like, whoa. Then I said to my husband, I said, 
I mean, those times I, I remember that he was quiet. Conversations were very minimal. You know, there was some atmosphere at home, a little tense, but in terms of maybe prohibition or whatever, we were still all still living very well. Every, everything was going okay. Both of us contribute and, you know, we help each other. Everything is sorted, you know. It was going well. So one day when I heard, or he told me later about how he had really lost, we had lost a lot of our investments and all that. And I said, what? How come you went through that period and you, we, we didn't feel it. We didn't know because he didn't complain. He didn't cry. He did. But then looking back, I saw that those times he was quiet. Can you imagine if those times I said, is it fair? Is it fair? This 50, 50, something, something. Is it fair? Is it fair? Meanwhile, the person was silently suffering, but we didn't know. I didn't know. You know, so later I look back and I realized that, wow, no matter what you are going through on a daily basis, we have to work well. We have to live well. You just don't know the day you're going to hear, wow, sweetheart, God bless you. I went through this, 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 and you stood by me the whole time. God bless you. Those are the kinds of things that I think about. As in, we are vessels of righteousness, no matter what you are doing. May it bring glory to God. May it be pleasing to God. Even your inner man, what you are thinking, what you are doing, not just the outer man of making that 50% provision. But inside you, what are you thinking? Are you thinking, wicked man, selfish, you earn more than me, you won't put it all down for the house, only me, and something, something, nagging, complaining, no, that one, no, no, that's not the way. Mm? So look at things differently. I don't know what is happening, the, the dynamics of the home, I don't know. You also don't know the details, but God knows. Just help out, just help out. You're a good woman and you are able to do this. Help out. And whatever you are doing, remember it's a seed. So the Lord gives the harvest anyway. That's it. It's not about fairness. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Adeline. <clears throat> so take our next questions. Um, it says that, how do you protect your child from abuse in a 50-50 custody situation? There is currently little evidence to suggest abuse, but based on the emotional and psychological abuse I have endured, and my knowledge and experience of his passive, aggressive communication. I worry about a clash in parenting beliefs and styles. Also having witnessed his family style of parenting. This is the kind of parenting I was subjected to in the marriage before being abandoned and rejected. It was based on bullying, accusations, threats, and ostracization. Who is going to advocate for my toddler in my absence? I worry about him. So this one is talking about child protection in the 50-50 custody situation. It's actually talking about fear. Mm. 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 Yeah. It's it's talking about, yeah. <laughs> it's, actually talking about fear. it's actually talking about fear. Yeah. It's talking about fear. You, you, you have a fear based on a variety of things. And whether you think the fear is well grounded or not, it doesn't change it into faith. It will remain. Yeah. And in that zone, you and I know we are not working right. Mm -hmm. That is one. Okay. Now, secondly, under what circumstances did you begin to think that you are the protector of your child? In fact, your own personal protection, oh, your own personal protection, oh, oh. A few things can be arranged just to help you see that you don't protect yourself. One or two things can just be arranged in your life for you. So you see that I, I cannot protect myself. Now, if that would be a problem, under what circumstances then can I become the reliable protector for anybody, whether in my presence or absence? Will this child go out? Will this child go to school? Who will protect them there? Will this child ever visit a friend in your absence? Who will protect them there? 
will this child always be under mommy's apron because of mommy's fear? Because mommy is guardian angel. Only mommy loves this child. Nobody else is looking out for this child except me. Sis, don't let fear drive you. Please, do not let fear drive you. Do not let fear drive you. You can say that, oh, yes, I know what I'm talking about. I saw this. It's the same. I, uh, so I'm expecting that this. I'm expecting that that. Based on this and that. But would you agree that it is not a confidence in the power of God? It's a confidence in the power of evil. There's a strong confidence in what the enemy will be able to arrange on, on behalf and concerning your child. And you don't see where your power is, but you have power, but it's not in yourself. If you are a believer, what is it you believe in and who is it that you believe in? What is it you believe in and who is it that you believe in? Who is it that you believe in? What, what have you come to? What have you come to? That there is no greater God than yourself. Who do you see? But if you are a believer, if you are an unbeliever, then your God is your stomach and your fear is your Lord and everything is fine. I mean, that's the road. But if you are born of God, what God is it that you serve? I'm like, what, what, which God is this? Which God is this? Which God do you claim you know? Which God? Look, people are bowing down in front of stones and demons are helping them. They protect them. They arrange certain things for them. They set them up and all of those things. It works, I'm telling you. You will pay dearly for it though. What I mean is there is power beyond human in the earth. Which God did you choose that you are suffering like this? Which God? Which God is it that you chose that, that, that you have to carry your own case like this? Which God is it? Which God? Please, if your God is incapable of protecting, if your God does not see, does not hear, and does not deliver those who put their trust in him, please drop him, okay? Um, I can tell you boldly. If that's the God you have believed, that's the God you are serving. I don't know whether in church or wherever it is, wherever it is that you may serve this God of yours. But if that's the God that you manage to get, drop him. Drop him. You don't need a God that is human. Then what's the use? What is the use? Because after all, I can do it myself. You are my level, my classmate. My strength is equal to your strength. My ability is your ability. In fact, if I don't cover you, you can't even cover. Who needs such a God? What kind of God is that? Do you have a proper God or is paper? That's why fear drives us. Fear drives us only as far as our God has deficiencies. Because it makes up for those, the, the area your God can cover, that's what fear covers for you. So if you find a God that can cover those areas, you will not be afraid because you will know that you've got a God that covers those areas. Do you, do you see? The truth will make me free. The truth will make you free. If you can't trust your God, and I don't mean the trust that you set the terms. No, every God has their rules. 
I repeat, every God has their rules. Every God has their processes. They tell you, this is how you access my power. This is how you work with me. They tell you. So you don't create your own processes and, and think that they will align. It doesn't work that way. So the God you found, check his rules and guidelines carefully. That's the research you need to do, not your experience. Not your experience, not your knowledge. No. Research into how you access the power of a God who sees and a God that protects and a God that keeps. A God that will walk you on scorpions and in serpents and keep you safe. That one. Research that one and follow it. Okay? Please, follow it. We, 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 we can't play games. This is life and death you understand so says i hope you appreciate my seriousness because it is life and death we can't play games we don't have time to waste on useless gods that cannot do thing where i have to be my own god we don't have time to waste there's too much at stake there's too much at stake so let your eyes be red and find yourself the God who sees. Find yourself the God who can protect. Find yourself the God who is powerful. Find yourself the God who knows. And find his ways. Find his processes. Find out how he likes things done for those that he covers and fall in line. Then you will have no fear. Whether it's 50-50 custody, 100-0 custody, 70-20, you will sleep like a baby. Because it's not you that's covering. You have now, now you have a God. You will sleep. And somebody may ask, hey, are you not afraid? He's with the family of Wana Wana. Do, do, are you not afraid? They are idol worshippers. They are oh, 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 you will smile. Because you now have a God who is more than able over that space. You are not afraid. If your God needs you to speak, to pray, to do something, whatever it is, he will show you so you know you are covered. Keep your ear to your God. Okay? You cannot be led by fear. You can choose to be. I mean, everybody has a choice. But you are asking a very important question because you are looking for answers you have found the limitation to your own leadership you have found the limitation that you okay. have you have found the limitation and you are calling on how do i do this so i pray god my god and i think your god that you will be able to find the power that covers, that you may find rest. It will not be your experience that protects your son or your children or your daughter. I don't know, a boy or girl. It will never be you. Never. Ah, this one is because you know. What about the ones you don't know? Please, you can't do it. You can't. But there are powers. There is a power that can do it. You don't seem to have been engaged with him yet. That's why fear is covering the zone. But find that power. Find that God. Properly find that God. And let that God cover you. You will, you will be fine. Then you'll be at rest. Then you don't need your personal umbrella. God, your God, will be your umbrella. I mean, your, I don't mean the math, your God. I mean the proper, your God. You understand what I, I'm saying? Not the one, oh, I have God. I know God will. No, 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 no. We finished that one. Nonsense. It does, if it doesn't change my life, eh? if it doesn't make a difference in my life, if I cannot rest my faith in him, if it doesn't, if, if I can't follow the instructions of this God and find deliverance, peace, hope, joy, rest, whatever, wisdom, What's the use? 
Why, why would I talk about, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I have God, I'm a believer, a Christian, something, something. Look, it's not a, 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 a Ralph Lauren shirt that we wear. It's not. We are talking real issues. So we don't have time for the creation in the windows, the reality of God. Find it. Walk in it. And you will do more than have rest concerning this. You will have light for the other things that need to be put right in your home, that need to be put right in your life, that need to be put right for your children and your generation. And the calling that God called you to in the first instance, which is why you arrived in that family he put you. May God open your eyes, you will see. You did not go there by accident. That family you married into, you did not marry into it by accident. And it wasn't because God did not know. You went there because there was something and a calling. There's something that you are to do about the matter. And it is not covering your toddler. No, there is something you are supposed to do about it under the leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit. But you will not do it so long as you remain in the flesh and you are monitoring fleshly news. You will know. But there is something. You have a calling there. You have a calling there. May God help you to see it and to be able to execute it because he will ask you about it. And he loves you. So we are having this conversation. God bless you, my sister. God bless you so much, Sister Afi. Sisters, I'm so blessed, so much blessed. In fact, as um, Pastor Adline and Sister Efi kept sharing, I've been singing to the Lord. There's a song on my heart, Sister Lena. I don't know whether you know how to sing that song. It's Yahweh. And I have the desire that we need to close with a worship and exalt his name. Which God are we serving? Which God are we serving? From the questions that are coming, our time, our time is up. It's 10.15 now. We can't take... Um, further questions so we would leave them for another session but as sister uh, if he and pastor line were singing i felt the need for us to exalt our god especially when we listen to to, to the stories the testimonies that were shared you look at your own life you look at what others are going through in all this situation we see a god who laughs we see a God who doesn't give up on anyone. We see a God who excels in strength. And we see a God who doesn't lie. We only see a God who stands by his word. Words spoken over how many years ago? Millions of years ago. He stands by them and he performs them. We see a God whose heart is beating for us to come to him with our burdens. Who is more willing to to, to Remove the burdens on our heads and make us walk light and enjoy our journey with him till he calls us. We thank him for tonight. I don't know what um, the Lord has said to you, but I believe strongly that he has spoken to you. He has spoken to me. I also kept looking back at my journey till where I am now. I see him. So he's so working. Sisters, let's draw closer to him. Let's not um, lose hope. Let's not be overwhelmed with our situation because he is able to do all things. And so at this moment, I would like to plead with all of us who forwarded the questions through the Google form. If I haven't read your question, please take heart. They are a lot, but I know that God will enable um, Sisters to Sister Ivy and Pastor Adline and whoever he, he, he prepares to, to deal with these questions at the right time. Just relax, just take time. And I know the Lord will make it possible for your issue to be addressed. Sisters, okay, let me see whether I have anything in the chat here. Okay, I don't have any personal message. Okay, Sister Jemima, is it a top up you want to do or I can see a chat from you. Hello, Sister Jemima. 
please are you with us hello can you hear me yes i can do you want to yes ask to oh, yes. okay 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 please do before we yes. close thank you thank you yeah so with um everything that has been discussed i've realized that most of the time and i was also in that case it's very easy to see what the other person is doing wrong but that is why god calls us to himself the healing starts with us with you who is ready to be healed or who is ready to seek for help. The healing starts with you. And when God draws you away to himself, then you are strengthened with might in the inner man. It's only at that point when you're able to overlook your emotions and it does not come easy. When you're able to overlook your personal pain, your hurt, the pride, the ego, and that emotion that you're able to see as the father sees. Because I found that it's very easy to be um, clouded. Your judgment is very easy to be clouded by what you are feeling, the emotions that you are going through. But that same Paul, who is seen as um, a murderer, is God's apostle, you see. So I believe there was somebody, the church was praying for him, or somebody somewhere was praying for him. So in there was the assignment. But then if you are so caught up with how I feeling, how he made me feel, and I was very hurt, and he made me, made me, made me. Those emotions, that is where God calls us to have that personal relationship with him, so that we are strengthened with might, so that we're able to die to self. And now the assignment is no more about you. It's no more about what he did to hurt you, but it's about what God has called you to do. And he strengthens you, and you're able to do it. That's all I wanted to say. God richly bless you, Sister Jemima, for sharing. Our God is good. Sisters, our God is good. We always say it. I, I pray that it will not only be our everyday cliche, but we will truly believe it. He is truly good. He is good and he is able to do all things. He's able to do all things. Our time is up. Do we have any? Um, comments before we close. We are holding on to the rest of the questions, but if you want to add to what has been shared, maybe in a minute we could do that. Otherwise, we would round up and close time. The word says in Hebrews, sorry, John 8, 32. I'm reading from the Passion Translation, it says that for if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. For if you embrace the truth, if you embrace it, there's a condition, if you embrace it. Pastor Adline has spoken, Sister Adline, uh, Sister Ife has shared, they've shared so much divine truth. Sisters have also shared their testimony with us. Now the choice is yours, the choice is mine. If we embrace the truth we have heard, the truth from the word, it will release true freedom into our lives. And the spirit of God who is living in us is willing to set us free from anything that is trying to keep us bound. May the Lord bless all of us. Amen. Saifi, yes, would you please. like to close us please we will continue another time somewhere and and sure. Saifi, are we uh, i just want to find out so that maybe sisters might get the information um yes. is it possible to continue the questions during the marriage session or we could make time during um, another how to series because the questions are actually many about 17 okay they so are lengthy I Bit, yeah. <laughs> yes, I I suspect that um, we will probably cover them in two more sessions. Um, right. So, God willing, yes, in in we can do that in the Mary School. That's on okay. Tuesday, isn't it? Tuesday, can, yes, yes, yes that's on the, with the Mary School. On but we have the Friday retreat. At the retreat, yes, we'll miss it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yes. So maybe we could hold on 
after the retreat and then we go to the retreat. Yes, after the retreat. Okay. So that yes. will be in the following week. Yes, please. The, the week yes. after the coming week. Yes. I think yes, we can please. do it. Yes, yes. Yes, thank you very much. So, sisters, if your question has not been addressed, I would plead with you to kindly join our next session after the retreats. Please do well to join. Don't miss any of the sessions because you don't know when your answer will be. God will be speaking to you. So, may the Lord help us. Amen. So, sister, if you kindly round up and close us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And... God bless you. Sisters, God richly bless each one of us. You see, um, in his love for us, he arranged for us to hear these words. And sometimes it might be, sometimes it might even sound very strange because his word does not... Uh, you know, it heals, encourages, but will not leave us in the comfort of the flesh, but only in the comfort of the spirit. Tonight, you were here by appointment. If you listen to this, that has been arranged by God. There's a purpose. Even if it stirs you up to anger, even if it calls forth irritation, and they don't know what they, they, if they knew. They don't think that they understand. I don't think this, this, even if that's the sort of um, reaction that it seems to call up in you. You are not here accidentally. And others too have heard what God wants them to also hear in terms of directing their steps. Others have had their eyes opened, you know, to their own parts in what is going on or what has gone on. All of us have been helped by God. Please, let us each and together turn to the Lord now. I would like you to please thank him with us for what he has chosen to share tonight and what he will share and how he'll teach us further. Then please respond to him. If he said something, if there's something you don't understand, Lord, I don't understand this. Lord, no, 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 I don't think it makes sense. Talk to him normally and naturally and sincerely, but know that he is God and that he will respond, he will help you. You see, so let us please speak to our Father together. You pray wherever you are. You pray wherever you are. I may sing or whatever, but you pray wherever you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you've shared. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for the shakeups. Thank you for the corrections. Thank you for the callings. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the help that's available to us. Thank you for the transformations. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the grace, Lord. The grace poured out for me, for us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you for my sisters, every one of us. Thank you for Pastor Adline. Thank you, Lord, for myself. Thank you, Lord, for Sister Pell, Sister Jemima, our sister who also testified, our other sisters who've also shared, even our sisters who have been listening, absorbing what you have to say. Thank you. Lord, be glorified in each of us, please. As your word said, if there's anything that is unclear to anyone, God, please make it plain to them. I ask for dreams. I ask for visions. I ask for understanding and insight by, by divine appointments and encounters.
in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I ask that when these things happen, eyes will see, ears will hear, they will understand and receive your message in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask, Lord, that the knowledge of your will will prosper in us, in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, all of us. I also ask for your heart in each of us, the heart of compassion and love, the true love of God in each of us. In me, Lord, in me, first of all, of course, in each of us, Lord, cause us to grow in you, cause us to understand the real deal, so that we are not misled. We are not misled. Cause us to see truth. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for each sister that sent in. I pray for every situation. Sisters, please, let's all also pray for everyone in a difficult situation. Pray for help, divine help. God himself knows exactly how to help. Pray in the spirits if you can. Let's pray. Dearest Father, for each in a difficult situation, I bring them before you. Both they and in a marriage, the wife and the husband, both we bring before you. Father, I ask you for mercy. I ask you for forgiveness. Oh God, yes. I ask you for life, Father. I ask you that you'll be able to forgive in the name of Jesus. I ask for your help. I ask for understanding. I ask for deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God, the work you have been at all along in this household, oh God, it will prosper. That that which you are doing. <laughs> Where's my car key? Yeah. Father, that that which you are actually doing in these homes, in our homes, Father, that it will it will flower bloom and blossom beautifully just like the examples of the testimonies we have heard at the time when they were walking through their tribulations lord they, they had a certain view it didn't look as if it will ever end it didn't look as if it's going to be different it looked helpless and hopeless but look at what you have done this is what we seek for each one of us but you are calling every one of us. Every situation is your voice calling your daughters to yourself, your sons to yourself. Let us hear you. Let us draw near to you. Let us come to you. Thank you very much that you are a dependable rock, that we can rely upon you. I know grace has been released. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for help. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for the dreams. Thank you for the visions. Thank you for the divine encounters, the divine conversations, the appointments, the ear that hears truth, Lord, the heart that understands and recognizes the tone that is yours. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. With my sisters, we say thank you. Let Jesus be exalted in our lives, Lord. Each of us, each of us, in joy, in pain, in difficulty, in ease. May we find you. May we walk in your peace. May we show how Jesus looks like in all situations. For we are yours and you are in us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Sweet sisters, God richly bless you. 
I would encourage each one of us, please, don't stop praying about these matters. And I don't mean only for yourself. Let the Spirit of God lead you in prayer concerning marriages in trouble, concerning wives, husbands who are walking in disobedience to God's word and God's ways. It includes abuse situations. It includes fear situations. It includes lies situations, disrespect situations, insolence situations, pride, every place of sin, division, selfishness, self-centeredness, blindness, everything. Please say, eh? please, I beg you, please let the spirit of God lead you in. Eh? When you are praying, pray for these places, pray for these homes. I know you pray for your home. So that one will not drop. But remember all of us, remember the others, remember the others. And in your prayer and from your prayer, God will release grace. He will teach, he will call, he will change, he will do things that you don't know. But he will answer that prayer of yours and mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. It's precious. Thank you very much. God bless you. I think that we can hand over to the next session. We will share the grace by God's grace. <laughs> and then as many of us as have some five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, you are awake and you are available. Why don't we pray? Be praying in the spirit. And I know that the spirit of God will, will, will touch on many places in that prayer session. You may not understand it. He may not translate it into English or something, but we know him. He will, he will, he will touch things. He will call out concerning things and many things will be dealt with tonight. Even in the prayer, the praying in the spirit that he's going to lead us through. So if you need to go, please feel free. And then you can go. Some of us will go and attend to something and come back and join. The session will go on for another two hours or so, just praying in the spirit. So you can go and rejoin uh, uh, if, if, if you are able to. But if not to, we will meet you at the next opportunity God gives you for us to fellowship in prayer. You are loved, you are blessed, and you are helped. God bless you, please. Let's share the grace together. You can unmute if possible. And so may the grace of Surely his goodness and mercy shall all the things of our God. And we shall draw in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen